get to 6.4. We're going to talk about radicals this period. Um, mm -hmm. Radicals or roots. Okay, so... Um, so... You can raise a number to an exponent, right? To a power, right? Like x to the power of n. And then um, the inverse of that is finding the nth root of a number, okay? So for example, you can take, you know, 2, raise it to the power of 4, and you get 16. Or you can take the 4th root of 16 and get the 2 back, right? So that's how it works. So x to the n equals a, and then, or you could just take the nth root of a and get your original base back. So, um, you know, so take a look at this one. If you have x cubed equal to 64 and you want to solve for x, um, the inverse of that, you take, since it, you know, to the power of 3, you take the cube root of 64. And basically, when you take a cube root, that's asking you what number, when you multiply it by itself three times, gives you that number. And we know that's 4 times 4 times 4. So this is 4. Okay? All right, so same with this one. You have x to the power of 4 equals 625. So to figure out what x is, you say, okay, what's the fourth root of 625? So basically, now you have to think to yourself, what number when you multiply with itself four times do you get 625? Do no. 16? These are just, like, we call them, like, the, not plus or minus. It's five. It's five. Right? Okay. And then x to the power of 5. We'll get more into that later. I know what you're asking. We'll so then x to the power of 5 equals 32. Now I want the fifth root of 32, which is 2. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're, gonna, we're not going to focus on calculator right now. Okay. So what we just found here, and this is the answer to your question, Owen. What we just found here are principal roots, right? Um, so some numbers might have more than one real root. So for example, 81 has two square roots, right? What two numbers when you multiply them by itself gives you 81? Well, it's 9 and negative 9, right? Ugh. Whenever that happens, whenever there is more than one, um, if n is an even number, Right? That usually happens when n is an even number. So we're in the square root of 81, the fourth root of a number, the sixth root of, and so on. The principal root is the non negative root. Okay? So for example, the square root of 81 is 9 and negative 9. Positive 9 is the principal root. That's how we call it. Okay? So some terminology here. This number over here is the index, n for index. Um, that is the radical sign, and the stuff that goes inside is the radicand, which we actually came across last time when we were graphing them, right? Okay, so let's simplify these. The square root of negative 8, I mean, you guys already know this. This is 2i root 2. Now, the cube root of negative 7, if it's a cube root, then there is no issue with i's. It'll just be negative 3. Why is it a cube? Because you can take the negative of it. Okay. Um, so here, you have a plus or minus in front, so you keep the plus or minus. Okay. You have a 16x to the 4 inside. You have to do each of these on their own. So first, the square root of the coefficient gives you a 4. Then the square root of x to the 4 will give you x squared. So, and then if you're like doubting yourself, okay, let's just like quickly check. Is 4x squared times 4x squared, is that 16x to the 4? It is, right? 
So yes, that's that's what we're doing there. Okay, so take a look here. I have negative outside of the radical, so that stays. Now I have the square root of something to the power of 16. So what we normally do in this case, the into I'm sorry, the index is a two here, right? So what you would normally do is you would do y plus seven, so the stuff inside, to the power of 16 divided by the index. That's how you do it. This will be, yeah, negative y plus seven to the power of eight. Now, I would like for you to be able to do that mentally so you don't have to show that intermediate blue step, okay? So just remember you divide, the exponent by the index. Okay, yes. If there was a three in the index, in that case, it would be 16 11. Correct. Okay. Yep. The two, it's because it's a square root. That index is a two if it's a square root. It's just not written if it's a two. Right? Okay. Okay. So, this is very important, and students often forget this. Um, okay. So, now we're looking at roots. And x is going to be the radicand, right? If x is positive, so let's for, take a look at if x is positive. So the stuff inside is positive, right? Then you can either have an even root or an odd root, okay? So if you have an even root, then you just get a positive real number. So for example, the square root of 16 is 4, okay? We're talking about the principal root, okay? And then like the cube root of 8 is 2. Okay, so positive, positive, fine. Let's, you know what, let me just write that down so you guys don't forget later what we're talking about, okay? So like if you have, you know, the square root of 16, that's 4, okay? Now what if x is less than 0? What if these numbers are now negative, okay? Then if you have an even index, so for example, if you have the square root of negative 16, then you get an imaginary number, 4i. And then if it's odd, then you just get a negative real number. Okay, and then when x is 0, then any root of 0 is just 0. Okay, if x is 0, it doesn't matter if it's even or odd, it's just 0. Okay, let's just do a couple of examples. Sometimes you have to introduce an absolute value, right? Okay, when you have to find an even root, of an even power and the result is an odd power then you have to put it as an absolute value okay so what do we mean by that suppose you have the square root of x to the six okay the exponent is even the index is even this will be x to the power of six over two which is what three okay now Remember what we just said. When you have an even root and a positive number, this has to come out as a positive number, correct? Mm -hmm. So now, depending on what x is, if you have x cubed, suppose x is negative 2, then x cubed would be a negative number. But how can you have something coming out of an even root and being a, neg a negative number? That doesn't work. So what you have to do is you have to go and you have to put absolute values around it. The way we remember it is if you get even, even, odd, right? Even, even, odd, right? That's how, like, you know, that's how the cool people say it. So if it's like even, even, odd, then you have to put absolute values around it, okay? And would that be the answer? Right. Okay, so let's do a couple of examples here. Remember, this is only for variables. So, like, if it's like a, you know, if it's like the, I don't know, like the square root of a number, then it's already positive or negative. You don't have to deal with that, okay? All right, so let's do this one. So 75, first we have to, you know, figure out what that is. So this is 5 and 25, 5, 5. So that's going to be 5 root 5. Oh, my God, it's times 3. I'm so sorry. Okay, okay. So if you have the square root of all that, this is technically the square root of 75 times the square root of t to the 6, right? So these are like, you're doing them separately. So this is going to be 3, oh my God, 
5 root 3. This is what happens on Tuesdays when I've just been teaching straight through since 8 o'clock. Okay? Times. Okay, here we're going to get t to the power of 6 over 2, 3. But where did that come from? That came from even, even, and became odd. So now I need to put absolute values around it. Okay, so what do you have to show and what can you not show here? You have to obviously show this answer here. This intermediate step, I only put this so you guys can see what's happening. You don't have to show it to me. All right, let me do a couple more and then I'll ask, um, uh, and then I'll take some questions. Huh? No, that's what I said. It's only for the variables. Okay. So this one too, let's just rewrite it separately for the time being. This is the square root of negative 36 times the square root of y to the 4. So the first one gives you what? 6i. And then I get y squared. Now here, it's even, even, even. Don't worry about it, right? Because it's y squared. That doesn't have the um, problem of, you know, possibly being negative, right? No, you can divide even by even and get either an even number or an odd number. So 6 divided by 2 is 3, right? But 4 divided by 2 is 2. So when you divide two even numbers, sometimes you get odd, sometimes you get even. Okay, here, let's try to do this um, right off the bat. So I have a negative outside. Square root of 49 is? Then u to the what? 4 times v to the 6. Do any of those need absolute values? No. No. Okay. Here. Cube root, negative inside, negative just comes out. Cube root of 27 is 3. Okay, x to the second power, y to the 4. Do we need absolute values here? No. Would we ever have needed absolute values here? Yeah. No, because it's an odd root. Okay? Okay. Yep. Yeah. So if it's even and even in here, right? Okay, so this is an even root. Whatever comes out of an even root has to be a positive number, right? So like you can't get the square root of something be a negative number, right? So here we got the square root and we got t cubed, okay? Okay, since this has an odd exponent, depending on what the value of t is, this can potentially be negative. So if t was 2, no problem. But if t was negative 2, this could be a negative 8. But how can you have something come out of an even root but be a negative? Yeah. Right? So you have to fix that by putting absolute values around it. Okay. Yep. No, just the t cubed. Just whatever term will potentially be negative. Okay, so 243, this is 9 times 27. And then this is... Yeah, yeah, but we, we're we factoring first. So first divide by whatever you can divide by. I mean, so this you should be able to do, right? Because like you could, you should be able to divide... Even, okay, so suppose you couldn't. Could you divide 243 by 3? Yeah. What would you get? 81. Okay? Channel your, channel your elementary school days. You can if you, well, not yet, no, because we have to do 4. Okay, we're, guys, we're not going to go over. We're in algebra 2 honors. We're not going to go over how you can divide those two, yeah? Okay, so here, this is 9 times 9, 3, 3, 3, 3. Okay, now, this is a fifth root. That means to come out of the root, you have to group them by fives. So here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all of these come out as a single 3. Let me do it this way so it's more obvious. Come out two, three. So the next part of this, right? Okay, okay. Hang on. 
We don't have an even root here, so I don't have to worry about exponents. Uh, I'm sorry, um, absolute values. Okay, let me do another one and I'll take questions. Okay, so here, I have the fourth root of 16. What will that be? Two. Two. Now, x to the what? Just x, x to the one. Y to the two. Z to the, okay. Now, even, even, right? So I need an um, absolute value for the x and for the z. So I put one here and I put one here. Okay, okay. That just looks messy and you don't even know, like it looks like the y squared also has absolute values. You see that? Like you don't even know where one ends and when another one begins. So the elegant way of writing it is 2y squared xz cubed. You can group them like this. Okay? Now, are there any questions? Please raise your hands if you have questions. Yes. No. No, no. Other questions? Yep. For this one? Yes. So whenever it's even in this. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. I still don't get how two point three three. You have to do the prime factorization. Divide by number. You know what? Let's go through this later because this can be an algebra one. Let's go through that later when we have time. Okay? Okay? All right, yes. On number five D, if it was instead of five, it was like four would be Wait, wait, say, say it again. Uh-huh, fifth root. Uh-huh. Right. If it was a fourth root, yeah. then four of them would come out, one would stay. So it would be three, fourth root of three. If it was fourth root of 243, it would be three, fourth root of three. Okay, we'll do a little bit more of this later, okay? Because I, I want to do the Algebra 2 stuff now, and then I'll do the Algebra 1 stuff later. Okay. Um, okay. Um, go ahead and take out your calculators, please. Buttons here. So the first one, look, you want to do a cube root. So you can do Control and this button to the left of the four row, right? And you see how you get these two um, spots here. Okay, to go between fields, always press tab. So I would do three, tab, 58, enter, and you should get this number. Now it goes, um, it says to round to three decimal places, so 3.871. Um, I am liberally taking points off for not rounding to the correct decimal place, okay? Go to you first. What's the, what's B? Okay. Um, Sydney, did you get C? Um, okay, raise your hand if you got C, yeah. Yep. Okay, raise your hand if you got D. Um, Isabel, I haven't heard from you in a while. 2.903. Okay, so look. A little bit of like, you know, notation. No matter how many decimals we round to, even if we round it to like 22 decimal places, it is still an approximation of the exact answer. The exact answer here is fourth root of 71. That's the exact answer. And then just like pi, right, no matter where you round to, it's an approximation. Those are always approximations. So sometimes, right, like when you really want to get technical about things, we use these squigglies to say approximately equal to as opposed to this, which means exactly equal to. Okay, will that be points off? No, but I am going to use them, you know, interchangeably just so you guys get used to the notation, right? So for example, look, if I have x plus 3 minus 4, this is exactly equal to x minus 1, okay? Exactly equal to. But 
if I have um, like what like pi, let's say, this is not exactly equal to 3.14. This is approximately equal to 3.14. Like, do you see the little nuance of a difference there? Yeah? Okay. All right. Let's move on to this word problem because that's what we do at math. Okay. According to a worldwide injury prevention study, the number of collisions between bicycles and automobiles increased as the number of bicycles per intersection increased. Don't even get me started on this. Like people in LA do not know how to stop and watch for like people on bicycles, right? Which is so sad. Um, this relationship can be expressed using the equation this. So how did that come about? Somebody like took the data and they analyzed the data and they realized that it fits this equation, okay? So when you have something like this given, you have to know what to watch out for. So here is the function. Now, identify these. B is the number of bicycles. C is the number of collisions. Okay, B for bicycles, C for collisions. Cool, we got that. Now, let's see what we're asked for. Estimate the number of collisions, so I want C, at an intersection that has 1,000 bicycle riders per week. That, what quantity is a thousand? B, right? B is a thousand and I want C. So, okay, so C is the fifth root of a thousand squared, which is how much? 15.8. So, what, how would I give the answer? It's about 16 collisions, yeah. So, yeah you have to be given the function in order to do this because we're not an expert on collisions and then you have to be given like some other information so here if the total number of collisions reported in one week is 21 this time c is 21 estimate the number of bicycle riders right so now we want b so 21 equals fifth root of b so how much is b Huh? Oh, sorry, B squared. Okay, so 21 to the power of 5 is B squared. And then what's B then? Well, so to find B, I have to take a square root. So the square root of 21 to the power of 5 is B. So let's see what that is. I don't have the answer. The square root of 21 to the power of 5. Oh, what is that? How did I do that? Oh, I know what I did. Okay, 2020, right. 2020.9. Yeah, so B is about 2021 writers. Okay, questions. Okay.